in addition to Predaliens and Praetorians making a return, with the Predaliens having a more interesting design to them than they did in the first game, mostly in the area of color. This one also has Runners, which I think is sort of supposed to be the alien from the third movie. Very fast, but also weaker. Smaller. Very clearly from a quadruped, you know, four-legged animal. The Marine now has a pistol and a shotgun, in addition to the pulse rifle, smart gun, minigun, very nice new minigun by the way, grenade launcher, now with timed grenades, proximity mines, EMP grenades, which work like the Predator's pistol, and spider grenades, which are like proximity mines that pursue the enemy once activated by proximity. Again a flamethrower, much more effective this time. I don't think that the flames coming out look quite as real as the ones in the first, though. The graphics when you're on fire are nicer, but it's much less intense, even if it's still pretty dangerous when you're on fire, to be on fire. also have a sniper rifle, which is really mostly for multiplayer. The Predator's cloak seems to work much better. The rocket launcher also gets guided rockets. Several of the Marines' weapons have two kinds of ammo. The pistol has regular bullets and armor piercing, the shotgun has up-close shells, and this more precise shell that's very... but works across a much greater distance. The pulse rifle, of course, has grenades as the secondary. And you're now limited to only eight grenades. In the first one, you can basically get 99 if you can store up that many. One thing that the first hand that this doesn't is this mode called Skirmish if you're just one person, and I think Co-op if you're playing it multiplayer. This has all the players fighting together as either Marines or Predators. Each individual can pick which one he wants to be. An endless stream of aliens. And this is so much fun, and the second one really misses that. It doesn't have bots for multiplayer at all. In single player, all the enemies will be programmed the same way on each playthrough. So if you keep killing an enemy and then loading and then killing it again, it'll behave the exact same way each time unless you move in a different direction, in which case it'll follow in that direction and so on and so forth. This also means that the game works a little less well each successive playthrough because you just know what's gonna happen. Graphics are much better and the ones in the first are decent enough for 99. There's a pretty nice level of expression to the faces, although the eyes tend to be quite dead. The body language does not always work. It's especially embarrassing for the alien ones in the in-game cutscenes or scripted sequences. In multiplayer, you can also turn on... When you set up a multiplayer match, you can turn the alien life cycle on or off. So those who want to play as alien can actually start as facehugger. Speaking from personal experience, facehugging your friends is way more fun than it should be. Which is already a lot. Especially on land when you can hear or see them jump in the seat when you facehug them. I will say though that it seems like you can only play as drone, play with the alien life cycle on. The multiplayer really only has free for all and team deathmatch. There are a couple of ones that sound different, but they're really just team deathmatch. Multiplayer also has the option of class matches, where the Predator or Marine will start with the weapons assigned to that class and can't pick up any of the others. So you might start with a really powerful weapon, but you can't pick up any weapon that you don't start with. All three have seven campaigns to them and they're very clearly connected, and there's a great plot from start to finish, and all three stories very clearly impact each other. Each campaign will have several levels to it. The level design is quite nice, but also very linear. You cannot get lost in this game. You always know where to go. You'll very quickly get used to what to look for as the path to get further for each of the three species. The graphics engine does have its limitations, and the butt-ugly trees for the Predator are a really good example of this. 
the voice acting tends to be great, and the characters are pretty good too, even if they're not terribly developed and some are a little stereotypical. All three species have the ability to tear the enemies apart. As all three in th as all three species in this one, you feel capable. You might at times get overwhelmed, or at least almost, but you feel like you can really kick at least some ass, where the first one really just had you barely surviving. For all three races you have some, for all three species you have some parts where you're really dominating your opponents and some where you're almost getting killed by them. Predator now has this sort of hacking device and the Marine also gets the override thing that they use in Aliens as well as the welding torch from that movie. When you headbite in this, you actually see the tongue coming out in the first person perspective. As both the Predator and the Alien, you get levels where the enemies are not expecting you, where in the first it was kind of like they always knew you might be there, or they at least very quickly adjusted to you being there. In this one, your enemies are a little bit more predictable and might fire in bursts so that if you just get at them in between bursts, you'll be mostly fine, and you can survive being hit straight, at least if it's only like one and it's not a minigun they're using. Like I said, it tries to make it more fair than the first one. And there are still very challenging areas. The music is very James Horner-esque, very much like the Alien score, and it rises in intensity when you've been spotted when you're in danger. Unlike the first one, this one really gives you a sense that something happened before the events of this game and something will happen after. It has a really great setup for the next game. Also, all three get a pretty cool boss fight ending. The movements of the alien and the predator are made cooler and you can now really see the fingers on the predator. I will say that it could be a little bit better with the wrist blade and the combi stick. You can be standing right in front of an enemy, aiming right at them, and seemingly hit them and not hurt them. And I mean, this happens often. I'm not sure where they went wrong, but they did. The spear gun has an alternate fire, which is more powerful, I think. All three sides are evened out more and given more tactical opportunities. It is maybe a little bit unfortunate that as Predator and Alien, you sometimes just have to rush at enemies. You don't really get to sneak around, use vents, and decide when to attack them. You just have to rush at them and hope that you survive them shooting at you. Something that really helps this be much more immersive than the first, which again is still a great game, is that the two creatures are much more vocal. They make hisses and growls as you close in for the kill. I don't know why, but I've honestly never completely delved into the plot of this. I think there might be a little bit too many threads for my tastes, but I do overall understand it, and it is very, very cool, very gratifying. The environments are great, and you get to go to several very different environments in this. The three races go to some of the same places. The first one allowed you to just pick up as many bullets as you wanted, basically. If you found bullets, you could pretty much pick them up. I think the limit was like 99 clips, you know, and grenades. In this, it's like five clips total and eight grenades for the pulse rifle, 750 bullets for the smart gun. You know, yes, these guns put distance between you and the aliens with claws of imminent death, but only until you run out of bullets. So you'll want to sometimes also use the pistol, even though it takes several hits to take a single alien down and it has to reload frequently, or the shotgun, although that lets them get very close to you. In this one, you don't just come upon loose face huggers and maybe the occasional open egg. In this, you can find eggs that aren't open yet, and if you get too close to them, they will open. And you can kind of decide if you want to waste bullets from your automatic weapons from far away, or if you want to take the chance and get up close and use a single shotgun shell to take them out. The face hugger on the face is also a much cooler effect this time. And don't get me wrong, it was awesome in the first one. You'll find floors with acid blood having burnt the way several layers through. 
aliens will break through doors to come get at you. 